What's up, everybody? This is Carl from Tech for Goodies, and today we're taking a look at a multicolor 3D printer. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Flash Forge AD5X. We'll go over the specs, we'll take a look at the device itself, see how easy it was to assemble, and also talk about the features and benefits of using the specific printer. So let's go ahead and start with the unboxing. So basically, I really liked the assembly and put together process of this printer. It's set up so that when it comes, it comes in one box. Uh, you'll have to buy the filament separately to make sure that you have one, two, three, or four rolls of filament for the multicolor. And when you take it out, it's simply a matter of taking your time and kind of pulling out the sort of shipping supports that they have in there. They'll have all sorts of stuff in there from foam uh, to supports to screwed in plastic parts to make sure that the nozzle doesn't get jostled or damaged or the build plate or anything like that. The other thing that you'll have to do is also put together the filament holders on the side because it is a multicolor printer. You're gonna have to put those on the side and then also also string the filament tubes up to the nozzle. Now it automatically does the smart switch for you based on what you do in the 3D printing slicer. And once you have that all set up, you install the PC software for the AD5X and start. Now they sent this over for me to try out and show to you all, but what I liked about it was the fact that A, it was multicolor, and B, it's extremely affordable. This is kind of their budget model that is good for like beginners and would be good for like print farm owners, people that need to buy a bunch of them in order to print out a lot of things. But as me being a beginner to 3D printing and 3D printing in color, it really appealed to me. So let me show you a couple of things I was able to print and then we'll talk about what types of filaments you can use, uh, what's special about this printer, the specifications and stuff like that. So basically what I did was start out by printing this Benchy. So this is a standard Benchy that you always are able to print uh, with uh, most of your 3D printers. It's kind of the standard basic beginner print when you first open your printer to try to print it and just see how your printer performs. The layer lines look good, the arches look good, the angles look good, so everything looks really nice and smooth and you can see a lot of detail. So then I kind of stepped it up and I didn't go into the multicolor right away. I went and printed out one of these little flexible sharks and the cool thing about this is that it does print kind of flat like this and then when you pick it up off the print plate, it's automatically connected. You don't have to connect any of the stuff together. The next thing I did was this little bowl guy because I wanted to try out the multicolor printing. Now, the one thing that everyone should know with multicolor printing is that the machine will automatically switch the colors for you. If you have four colors in your print, then it will automatically switch the filament. But when it does that, it has to purge a little bit. There's still a little bit left in the nozzle that it has to get rid of and then bring the new color in so there's no mixing. You get a clean print for the multicolor. And that can become a little bit wasteful. It just depends on how you set up your 3D print. So imagine you had just a cylinder that went up that you were printing, and it had four colors on each quadrant. It's gotta change the filament four times for every layer. And if you have 500 layers, that means you're doing what? Like 20,000 different filament changes? I don't know if that's the, my math isn't that great right off the top of my head. But anyway, you get the idea. So I went ahead and printed out this little cow. Now he has a very sort of plushy looking texture to him. It's supposed to look like he's got like, I don't know, fabric on the outside. So those aren't layer lines that's actually meant to be in there. But you can see, how detailed kind of this printing can get with the tail, with the black and the purple. And then you have the green eyes and the purple eyes and then the hair at the top here, a little bit of fuzz down there. So this took quite a while to print, but the print quality, I mean, look at this. I'm gonna hold it up here for you. Um, it's just, it's just really good. I'm really impressed. And I haven't had any issues with it at all. It really has been a great printer because I've had printers in the past that A, took forever to DIY build and then wouldn't stick to the print plate that you're printing on. This one, I haven't had a issue where it hasn't uh, stuck to the print plate at all. It's been working great. So then I decided to go a little bit more hefty with this guy right here, this uh, I think Ditto from Pokemon. Um, again, I was trying to keep it a little bit more segmented with the print colors, so you can see the purple, then the green, then the 
uh, then the, I guess the reddish burgundy and then the black color here. So you can see here that the hat actually was the thing that took the longest to print because it's switching between those two colors at every single layer line because the inside is also purple. But anyway, you can kind of start to see here uh, the quality that I was able to get from the printer. And this is a pretty big print, you know, it was kind of like a, uh, a Halloween print that I wanted to try out. And now I can set it out as a little Halloween uh, decoration, I guess. Um, but so far these have been awesome and we've done a bunch of other things. My son is working on printing out his own uh, 3D printed airplane that actually flies. So he's working on that right now. But let's go ahead and look at sort of the printer and the features and the cool things about it that might make you interested in picking something like this up. Like I said, it does do four color printing. Now there are different types of filaments. If you're familiar with it, uh, you can do PLA, you can do ABS, you can do TPU. So you can do all those different filaments in one machine. The other thing that's different with this printer uh, than my old printer is my old printer had a print bed that basically has uh, a nozzle like this. Now the nozzle would move up like this while it printed, but the print bed would move around like this, right? And that can tend to lead to a lot of wobbling and a lot of misprints, but this is a Core XY printer, which means that the nozzle stays at the top while the print bed moves down. The nozzle does all the printing while the print bed moves down. The print bed is stationary so that it can stay inside the enclosure and give you a bit better result. In my opinion and kind of in my experience, that's been a bit better for printing. Now this does have high speed printing and let me look here. It looks like it's about 20,000 millimeters per second squared max acceleration. Now let me set this aside so I don't keep bumping it, but the standard print it says is up to 600 millimeters per second. Like I said, when I was doing this ditto here, I got tired of waiting. So at the top here, you can actually see um, maybe you can't even see it, but I switched it over to high speed after this point. And like, you can do that on the fly. Um, in fact, you can actually pause the printer and change filaments on the fly if you run out. And that's another good thing. Um, but it printed out just fine and I had no, no issues at all with the faster printing. One thing to note is that this is a 220 millimeter by 220 by 220. That means the cube that you print in is 220 millimeters across in depth and in height. So that's the maximum build volume you can do. Um, some printers like my Ender could do 250 or the Antina that I have, I think can do around 100. So this is kind of a perfectly fine print size in my opinion, but it just depends on what you're planning to print. And just for reference, something like the Bamboo A1 Mini has a 180 print size. So that's 180 by 180 by 180. You get the idea. Now, the one thing you should know about that I like a lot is that there is a touch screen for the control. You can go directly in there uh, to the touch screen and print directly from external media if you want to or you can print straight from your PC right from the FlashForge software. You can also purchase one of their cameras, their webcams, plug it in and use that to do time lapses or to check on your print if it's in the other room to make sure it's working well. I think that's something that is very important because you don't wanna have to get up if it's in the basement printing or something like that to check how it's going. Now the iPhone app is also great for checking your prints, checking the status, and it will give you notifications when that print is done or if there's a printer error. Let's say a, sometimes the filament actually gets twisted when it's trying to be pulled in, and that's with any printer. The filament roll might just happen to loop on itself and it gets stuck. It'll let you know so you can go fix that problem, hit start, and just continue from where you're at. Another thing to keep in mind is that the base model doesn't come with any sort of filament dryer. Uh, the filament does hook onto the side and you'll have to consider what you wanna do about drying your filament or at least keeping it dry. I live uh, in the Southeast, so it's very dry here all the time. So I haven't even had a problem with that, but it's something to keep in mind if you're looking to pick up any 3D printer, not just this one. And the other thing that I really like about the printer is that it has uh, a very compact shape. It is the 220 build plate, um, but the outer shell of it you can see here is basically just right outside that build plate and, and contains that build volume very well so it'll fit on your desk or somewhere very easily or if you have multiple of them it'll fit right next to each other. And again uh, it does do like I said the multiple uh, filament types. Let me take a look here. It does PLA, PETG, PLACF, uh, PETGCF, 
Uh, I think CF is for carbon fiber, and TPU95A. It does do auto leveling, which is excellent. What that does is it makes sure that the inside uh, uh, computer processor or whatever's in there knows what's going on with the print surface. If the print surface back here is two millimeters off, it's gonna come down and check in all sorts of different spots and make sure it understands so that your print will always stick well and print well. If your bed leveling is off, you can have all sorts of mess and stuff like that. So it's really nice that it has that built-in print leveling. It supports Wi-Fi, 5G, and 2.4G. That's how uh, you'll communicate to it with the software on your computer and through the phone. If you don't want to particularly use their software, you can go ahead and get the software that theirs is based off of. Theirs is built off of the Orca Slicer, so they have their own specific software that automatically recognizes everything and works with their printer. But if you're more advanced, you can go ahead and get the original Orca Slicer and do a few things with that if you want to make some very fine changes, but that's more of an advanced thing. If you're beginner you don't have to worry about that so all in all i've been very happy with this and that's my, my honest review is that it works great i love it so far you don't have to do all these goofy little characters and stuff like that that's just for fun but like for example i have a vent in my garage where a i don't know some sort of vent thing went out and i took that out but i still have the hole that's up there and i'm planning to go ahead and just print a nice fabricated cap to go on there put a little insulation on the inside and have it good to go you can think ahead like that and think of the things that you wish you know Gosh, I wish I had, you know, something for my desk that would allow me to hold my phone or something like that. Like, for example, something similar like this that I just happen to have here. Um, you can print whatever you want as long as you can design it. You can use something like Fusion 360, which is a software that you can install from Adobe. You can also use Onshape, which is like a free online program to start to design these things. You can use Blender. You can use whatever you want. It really is endless. But again, super happy with it. Uh, it's, I love the budget price. I might actually get another if we start doing a lot more of these prints because it is affordable and it works great and the multicolor is so awesome. If you're interested in more multicolor printing, definitely check out some videos on YouTube. You can start to see what you can do with the different filaments and I think it's really, really powerful. So anyway, I hope that helped you. I always hope these things help you. I try to just be honest about what these things are, what the benefits are, and things that I liked when I used them. If this helped you out if you found this useful anything just at least give me a thumbs up down there hit like if uh you want to see more of my videos hit subscribe i'd love to see you back but until next time this is carl from techful goodies and i'm out